Back in December, Michelle and I got ourselves this uh, really wonderful Cuisinart ice cream maker. Uh, not terrifically expensive, but uh, you know, really, uh, really effective. And we've been having so much fun making ice creams uh, from the recipes that come in the instruction manual. And uh, we also got ourselves this uh, cookbook from the Salt and Straw Company, and we've been making a, a bunch of their recipes as well. Um, and now I'm feeling confident enough that I've decided I want to do a little bit of an experiment and strike out on my own. So I want to combine two of my favorite things, uh, one of which is ice cream and uh, the other is lemon bars. Um, so I'm going to be exploring this and uh, taking you along with me on uh, this journey, which may be fantastic or may turn out to be an incredible cooking failure. Uh, so bear with me and we'll see what happens. So when you're making ice cream, you don't do it all at once. Like you don't put some milk and some lemon bars into an ice cream machine and uh, churn that up. What, what you'd get with that is you'd get some frozen milk and some frozen lemon bars and it would be uh, almost impossible to eat. So you start with an ice cream base and what that involves is sugar, uh, milk and cream, and uh, in the salt and straw version, uh, which I really love, um, some whole milk powder and some xanthan gum, uh, as well as some corn syrup. And, uh, you know, I know corn syrup is not the best product on the market, but we're talking about using a couple of tablespoons of corn syrup in something that's going to make, uh, you know, a quart and a half of ice cream. So it's, it's well distributed. You're not going to get a hefty dose of it. Now, as for the, the dry milk and the xanthan gum, very easy to find online. Uh, doesn't cost very much. Um, you know, all of this is, you know, really pure ingredient stuff, no chemical processing. Uh, and it adds a lot to the ice cream itself. The xanthan gum helps uh, stabilize it. It doesn't get a gummy. It doesn't get that sort of cheap store-bought flavor. Um, but it helps the ice cream uh, not melt the instant you take it out of the freezer. Uh, the dry milk powder adds a really good texture to it. So, um, you know, one thing that I'm doing different is instead of using regular sugar, I'm going to use brown sugar in the ice cream base, uh, dark brown sugar here. Um, and why am I doing that? Well, there's another book that I really love. It's called The Flavor Bible, and it's just a giant list of ingredients and things that go with those ingredients. So uh, since I want to use lemon bars, uh, I looked up lemon and lemon goes particularly well with brown sugar. But this is the first spot where things could go incredibly wrong. Uh, I've never seen an ice cream based recipe that uses brown sugar. And uh, you know, brown sugar is sugar from which the molasses has not been removed. So are those molasses going to give me completely the wrong texture? Um, is the brown sugar something that maybe should get swirled into a regular granulated sugar ice cream base at the last minute? Who knows? Uh, I guess we'll find out. All right, so I've, I've mixed the brown sugar with the xanthan gum and milk powder. I mean, you can see it's not exactly a homogenized mix. That's in part because the brown sugar was uh, kind of hardened, so I had to reconstitute it in the microwave, and then I packed it so it was hardened again. Um, and also, of course, you know, you've, you've got the, the white milk powder, the white xanthan gum, the brown sugar. You're, you're going to see uh, where they are adjacent to each other, which you don't quite see when you're using uh, granulated sugar. So I've also put a little bit of corn syrup in uh, the bottom of this saucepan, um, and I've got my uh, measuring cup of whole milk here. So I'm going to pour that in. Uh, now with this cold milk on, on the sticky corn syrup, uh, it immediately gets kind of goopy. Um, so, you know, you stir that for a while um, until it starts to dissolve. And this is a good time to turn off the camera because who needs to see me stirring forever. Okay, and while the camera was off aside from stirring the milk into the corn syrup or the corn syrup into the milk, however you think of it. I also uh, dumped the sugar mixture uh, into the milk and then I switched to a whisk and I started stirring or whisking that. 
And the idea is, um, which happens with the granulated sugar, you want to get it pretty smooth, pretty well incorporated. Um, which, uh, you know, it's not bad. Um, it's a little frothy, which is, of course, what happens when you're whisking milk and xanthan gum. The sugar crystals are not 100% broken up. Um, but I'm going to turn the heat on to medium, and I'm going to keep on whisking. The idea with this is that the heat helps the sugar crystals completely dissolve. You don't want this to simmer, so, you know, you, you're going to keep on whisking constantly and keep an eye on it. And if it starts to bubble, turn the heat down. Um, if you turn it down too far and there's nothing at all happening and it's room temperature again, turn the heat back up. But you're really just looking to get a liquid mixture here. You know, when you're freezing your ice cream, you're um, freezing a liquid base. You, you don't want grains and crystals coming out uh, so that you have a kind of crunchy ice cream. I mean, maybe you're putting some things into it that are going to be crunchy, but you don't want the ice cream itself uh, to taste like you're eating a bunch of sand. Okay, so we've magically gone about three or four minutes into the future, and uh, I am pleased to say I've got a, a legit liquid here. Um, so the final step is I've now got a measuring cup uh, full of cream. I'm going to pour that in. and whisk it just for the sake of getting everything combined in there. And now the next question, the final question for this stage of the process is, does it taste any good? Does it taste kind of sort of like an ice cream base or did I already make a, a disastrous mistake putting in brown sugar instead of uh, granulated sugar? And so far, so good. I mean, this tastes like an ice cream base, uh, slightly uh, more molasses-y, a little more smoky flavor than you get normally. Uh, but that's what we're going for with the brown sugar. I mean, in fact, it's so subtle. Uh, I may actually swirl in a little bit more brown sugar and have it dissolve before, uh, before I put it in the machine. One last step is I've uh, transferred the ice cream base out of the saucepan and into this uh, Tupperware. It's actually not Tupperware brand, so sorry about the trademark infringement, um, but it is a plastic airtight container um, and it's going to go into the fridge. Uh, I keep mine in there for about 24 hours. Uh, you really wanna have the ice cream base super cold, not frozen, but you know, I'm, I'm using a cold bowl ice cream maker. Uh, doesn't have an internal compressor, so you want everything to be just as cold as you can get it before you start trying to make the ice cream. So this is going to go into the fridge, and uh, I'll come back and start making the lemon bars.